Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be learning a little bit about darbuka drumming, which is popular in the Middle East. The darbuka, known by many different names, is an integral part of many music traditions across the Middle East. It originated more specifically, however, primarily from the geographical region that encompasses Egypt, Turkey, and Armenia. The exact origins are unclear, but goblet drums of a similar nature have been traced all the way back to ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian civilizations. The name darbuka is likely derived from the Arabic word daraba, which means to strike, like you would strike a drum. The darbuka might also be referred to as the dumbek, tabla, or a number of other names due to the variety of languages in the region that it is used. There may be some slight differences between drums referred to by these different names, but they are similar variations of the same drum. Traditionally, the darbuka was made from wood, clay, or sometimes metal, with fish or goat skin stretched over the top. Today, most modern darbukas are made with metal and synthetic skin. There are some slight variations on the darbuka that change depending on the music traditions of different regions. For example, the Turkish darbuka, up on the right that you see, has exposed edges, while the Egyptian darbuka, down on the left, has a rounded edge. Each style lends itself to different special techniques, such as finger snapping in Turkey versus a rapid roll in Egypt. So how do you play it? The darbuka is typically held in the player's lap across the leg on the opposite side of your dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, you would hold it on the left side of your lap. There are three basic sounds to be made with this drum. The first sound is doom, and that is made by slightly curving your fingers together and striking the middle of the drum with your fingertips. This is the deepest of the sounds. The tuck sound is achieved by striking the last joint in your ring and middle fingers against the edge of the drum. This motion should be driven by a flick in the wrist, not the whole arm. The ka sound is produced in pretty much the same way as the tuck sound, except in a slightly different location around the edge of the drum more on top, while the tech sound is slightly closer to the body. Unlike other goblet drums, such as the djembe, the darbuka is not symmetrical, which means different sounds can be produced from different places around the drum's membrane. For a right-handed player, the right hand tends to be focused on the downbeats, while the left hand focuses more on accents and trills. Let's take a look at these sounds in action. The player has provided us with some simple notation on the screen to follow along with the letters D, T, and K standing for Doom, Tech, and Ka, respectively. Pay special attention to how Tech and Ka are played differently. Although the darbuka was long considered to be a folk instrument, it has made an increasing appearance in classical music both in the Middle East and around the world within the past 200 years. French composer Hector Berlioz was the first to include the darbuka in a Western composition in his 1858 opera Les Troyens. The darbuka is popular in social settings like weddings, nightclubs, and other social events. At a number of these, darbuka players are often joined by belly dancers and or other Middle Eastern instruments. Take a look at this next video of some young musicians from Istanbul. As you will see, there are three darbuka players and one rik, which is a type of tambourine used in a lot of Arabic music. While you're watching, try to observe how the musicians interact with each other through their music.
That concludes our lesson on Darbuka today, but I hope that you learned something that inspires you to go out and learn some more. Thank you for learning with me.